Welcome to the Shearwalls online tutorial for the Canadian version. This first video will show you the layout of the basic functions of the program as well as how to quickly design a simple structure. Many engineers have purchased Shearwalls, however, they haven't taken the time to learn the program because they think it is a difficult task. Shearwalls is an engineering design aid for lateral wind and seismic load determination and for the design of wood shear walls for buildings subject to these loads. Shear walls will, but is not limited to, importing CAD, EMF, WMF, and PDF files to establish the building footprint for each level, model wood structures up to six stories, including the specification of openings in shear walls, automatically calculate seismic and wind loads based on the building code, relevant standards and site information, distribute shear forces to shear walls using either a flexible or rigid diaphragm analysis, design shear walls for their sheathing thickness and nailing requirements. For a complete description of the software capabilities, refer to the user guide. Upon opening shear walls for the first time, a window containing information regarding how to get started with shear walls will be displayed. The displayed steps guide the user to start from a new file to the design as well as viewing the results in log file. The getting started with Shearwalls window can be displayed at any time by selecting the getting started icon. The toolbars, data bars, and menus necessary to the successful design of a structure in Shearwalls are located at the top of the main window. The first group of buttons are dedicated to file operations such as starting a new file, opening a file, saving a file, and printing. The second group of buttons is dedicated to actions such as importing a CAD file, building blocks, walls, openings, extending walls upwards, roof, load generation site information, generate loads, and loads and forces. The last group of buttons relate to views such as the plan view, form view, elevation view, results, log file, and finally the acceptance of the design. More specifically, the log file contains intermediate calculations used to generate wind and seismic loads as well as for the torsional analysis. Furthermore, with the newly added acceptance design button, Shearwalls now allows you to transfer the design results from a successful design back to the input fields, replacing unknown values on those fields. This allows you to experiment with and tweak your design more easily. The status bar contains hints and instructions to the user and descriptions of the program buttons, menu items, and data field while the bottom right corner shows the position of the cursor on the plan view. The data bars are located at the top of each window or view. They allow the user to change building levels, to turn data on and off in the corresponding view, and provide for quicker selection of options and settings than by the settings dialog or the main menu. These icons will be further discussed in the following tutorials. The main menu bar of the program contains all of the commands represented by the toolbar buttons in addition to the view, window, and help menus to further guide the user. In addition, it contains several less commonly used commands such as print preview, fit view to, and select all shear walls, delete shear wall, and merge shear walls. The context menus will pop up anytime the user performs a right mouse click. They contain some of the more commonly used menu and toolbar commands and some extra shortcuts such as tiling the plan view with the elevation view. For illustration purposes, a simple structure will be created using the blocks button. Prior to creating the block, it is good practice to choose the unit system, the viewing area, and the mouse clicks interval. The unit system can be changed by selecting settings and then the format tab. The two options are metric and imperial. Note that this change can affect either distances or member sizes. 
The viewing area and mouse click intervals can be modified by selecting the View tab. The mouse click intervals is the smallest increment to which a wall segment or opening can be drawn or positioned on the grid view. Note that the position and length of the wall segments or openings can be modified precisely in their respective input form as will be shown further on. A block is created by simply dragging the mouse anywhere on the screen to form a rectangle or a square. Resizing or repositioning of the block is possible by selecting the block and dragging it. The dimensions of the block and its coordinates on the Cartesian plan can be adjusted more precisely following the creation of the block using the input form. The input form also allows to specify a block name, number of levels up to a maximum of 6 if the site location is in British Columbia, wall and floor height, length subjected to shrinkage, anchor bolt length, and foundation elevation. The diaphragm flexibility options in the structure input form will be furthermore discussed in Tutorial 3, Design Settings, but essentially deselecting either rigid or flexible will affect the worst case design scenario option found in the Design Settings. Shear walls allow for the possibility of having more than one block and of varying levels up to six stories. However, for this simple structure, we'll stay with one block and a single story. Blocks can be deleted by selecting the unwanted block and pressing the delete button. Once satisfied with the layout of the block, the walls can easily be modeled using the walls button. It is important to note that once the walls button has been selected, that changes to the planned geometry of the block cannot be done anymore. If the shear walls and shear line input form is not present in the walls view, it can be displayed by selecting the form view button. The form is divided into four main categories to facilitate the input process. The first section allows the user to pick a standard type of wall, suiting his or her needs, to then quickly modifying it. The wall segment section contains information on the selected wall segment, such as the hold down configuration, relative rigidity, and location. The third section deals with the shear wall schedule, which includes the type of sheathing for both interior and exterior, type of fastener, and spacing and finally the framing material. The fourth section deals with the hold downs associated with the type of wall used. One can change the type of hold down in order to accommodate the design forces. A few features of shear walls within the wall and shear line input form will now be shown. For example, if another standard type of wall is desired, it can easily be changed by selecting the drop down menu. However, if the wall or walls of interest are not selected prior to selecting another wall type, the new wall type will apply to subsequent walls only. We will now delete the wall we just created by selecting it and either right clicking on it and selecting delete or by simply pressing the delete key. Furthermore, when selecting exterior wall B1, it can be seen that the Design and Group option is selected. It allows the user to quickly change the properties of the shear wall material of all walls of the same type at once when only one wall is selected, as shown by the pop-up window.
wall A1 now has the same properties. If this is not the case, and that it is desired to have wall A1 with different properties than the others, the design and group option needs to be unchecked. Then the properties of that wall can be changed and it won't affect the others. Note that the other walls still have the 9.5mm thick defer plywood. The design and group option is only affected by the actual properties of the same type of wall. When the design and group option is selected and a selected wall is changed to another wall type, only that selected wall will be affected. Wall 2-1 and wall B-1 are still exterior walls with anchorage. For this example, all walls will be identical. To select all walls, you can either select them individually holding the control key or simply by pressing the control A keys. The walls will be exterior with anchorage, have a 9.5 millimeter thick D for plywood with an edge spacing of 150 millimeters. As it can be seen, it is possible to specify an interior sheathing. But for this example, no sheathing will be applied on the interior side, as it generally helps in seismic zone not to account for gypsum in order to keep a higher R value. Limiting the unknowns will speed up the computation time, and if the selected characteristics of the walls are not appropriate, they can always be changed in a following iteration. Now that we are satisfied with the wall properties, we can insert openings by selecting the Openings button. An opening can be created in one of two ways. By selecting a shear line and drawing an opening, or by using the Form View following the selection of the shear line. The Form View displays information about openings on the selected shear line. It is primarily divided into two sections. The first one deals with the physical opening in the wall, while the second section deals with the types of hold down to the right and left of the opening. Using the first method, drawing the opening on the shear line, which might not be as accurate as desired, the location and size of opening can be modified using the form view. Now, for example, if a window is desired next to the door just created, it can be added using the form view by selecting the new opening from the drop down menu and specifying the offset from the edge of the shear line, width, height, and offset from the bottom, and then selecting add. The openings can be seen in the elevation view by selecting the shear line of interest and selecting the elevation view button. The roof is added through the roof button where it can be modeled as flat roof, hip, or gable. The ridge direction, roof slope, and overhang can also be changed. The Load Generation Site Information tab ensures that the appropriate values are used for the generation of the wind and seismic loads. These details will be covered in a different tutorial. Once that the site information reflects the conditions of our design, the following step is to generate the wind and seismic loads. They can be generated using the Generate Loads button where the load input form is divided into two sections, wind and seismic. Loads can be generated for both wind and seismic, wind only, or seismic only. The loads can be generated for all building levels or individual levels.
They are then generated by selecting the generate loads on the selected levels. In the Canadian version, it is possible to see an additional option in the load input form. Upon activation, this option will include the self weight of the walls to calculate the wall dead loads that are considered to resist overturning into the following factor for walls without hold downs. Note that the self weight of floors, ceilings, and the roof entered in the seismic section of the input form are only used to generate building masses that are used to calculate the seismic loads. The loads shown in the plan view are for wind and can be changed using the show data bar and go into seismic. If additional loads are required, it can be done through the loads and forces button. Now we run the design, which generates a number of tables. The results are available from the results view icon in the toolbar. The results are organized into six main sections. Project information, structural data, loads, design summary, wind design, and seismic design. In the project information, information about the company, project description, design settings, and site information used for the generation of loads can be found. This first main section highlights the design settings and site information entered by the user prior to the design. The second main section, structural data, contains information about the geometry of the structure, the shear wall schedule, and information on the walls and openings location. The load section shows information related to the automatically generated load as well as those entered manually. The design summary provides a brief summary of the shear wall and hold down design. It is a good starting point to see where the failures are, if any. Note that this summary does not include failures such as percentage of gypsum, excessive fastener slippage, excessive story drift, seismic irregularities, and overcapacity ratio violation. The wind design and seismic design contain all of the results and details, such as the shear results, gypsum wallboard percentage, hold down design, drag strut forces, deflection, and hold down displacement for both flexible and rigid diaphragm design. Differences amongst the wind and seismic design sections are the fact that the wind has an extra section dealing with components and cladding, while the seismic design section has results tables for story drift and seismic irregularities. To verify whether a wall has failed in shear is done by going to either wind or seismic design and selecting flexible or rigid design and then going to shear results. In this system, the loads are very small and it passes since the critical response is less than one. You can also select a shear wall that you think might be susceptible to failure to verify if it passes by going to the elevation view. The forces shown here are for the flexible diaphragm seismic design. If this wall were to be under capacity, we would find the word failed across it. To view other types of load, we go to show, forces, rigid, and then show, wind, west to east, south to north. And we would repeat this for the two other cases. And that is how you design a simple structure.